He let man put their hands on him and mistreat him. And do, they did all they had in their hearts to do to that lovely person that had done no harm. The Lord Jesus did no sin. He could not sin. In him there was no sin. How can this be? How can this be? That the arm of the Lord, so mighty, so strong, the Lord Jesus Christ, that he was crucified through weakness. But really, friends, tonight in the meeting, I would like you to stop for a minute and think about that. Was it really weak? Was it really weak? So, friend, tonight, come with me at Golgotha, where they crucified the Lord Jesus Christ. And yes, it may seem to our eyes that it was weak, that he had no strength. That's what it looks to human eyes. But, friend, tonight, I have a question for you. What is that thought of you or I to stand before God with our sins and have him to judge us, every one of us, for our sins? Did you think about that? The Lord Jesus Christ. Here's a marvelous thing about the cross, to the man, to human eyes, it looked like it was weakness. But there the Lord on the cross, you know what he did? He took our sins because he's mighty. He's strong. He's the arm of God. And he could take all of our sins. And he stood before God and us. And friend, tonight the Lord Jesus, he suffered for our sins. He suffered for our sins. Isn't it something, friend, tonight in the meeting? Who of us could stand before God and only God? With my own sins, I dared not. I would have not been able to stand. But the Lord Jesus took all the sins of the world. And he suffered for every one of them on the tree. For though he was crucified through weakness, oh yeah, man's eyes. But friend, tonight this meaning is to change your eyesight when it comes to the cross and the one that hung on it. In other words, we need new glasses. We need a different vision, friend, tonight. Our sins, none of us can remove them. It's stained. It's attached to us. We can't remove them. So yet, he was crucified through weakness. But wonder of wonder, the verse finishes, does not finish there. Yet he liveth by the power of God. Mighty man, strong my Savior. He bore my sins and yours on the cross. And God's judgment fell upon him. And friend, tonight, the Lord Jesus, so strong, so mighty, that the wrath of God is no more. Because he was satisfied that his son was punished for our sins. Now, friend, we read tonight together in the Gospel of John, chapter 10. Do you have doubts in your mind that he's mighty? 
to save you from your sins? You have doubts that our, his hands are strong enough to bring you to heaven. Read, listen to what the Lord says in, in the Gospel of John chapter 10 and verse 27 and 28. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life. Now you have to be mighty. You have to be some strong to be able to speak like that, isn't it? And I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish. Because he suffered for our sins. My sins are no more. What about yours, friends, tonight in the meeting? What about your sins? And they shall never perish, the Lord says. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. The day I went to Christ to receive him as my Savior, he took me. And who in this world, whose power, whose principality, will be strong enough to snatch me out of his hand. Here's what the Lord says. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Isn't it wonderful, friend, tonight in the meeting? I hope you understand why at least we rejoice. It is no, there's no greater news than this, friend, tonight. The Lord Jesus, pierced the hands, feet, as we read together tonight, hung there on the tree with my sins, our sins. And he stood before God and us. And why the wrath of God will never reach to me? Because it fell upon his son on the cross. It's been taken care of. It could be taken care of for you tonight, dear friend, in the meeting. If you could only come to that lovely Savior, the arm of the Lord, with those lovely hands pierced for you. No one shall pluck them out of my hand. That's the promise. Friend, tonight, you may say to me and to whosoever, receive that lovely news for themselves. How can you trust in pierced hands to rest your soul for all the ages of eternity? How can you? Here's my answer to that. Weakness, crucified through weakness, you say, pierced hands. And you may tell me, how can the Lord hold you there? You're going to fall. There's holes there. You know what? You're right. I fell when I went into his hands. But you know what I fell in? I fell in the love of God. And I'm basking in it ever since that day. That's what I fell in when I went through those lovely holes made in his hands for me and you. You can have that friend tonight in the meeting tonight. The day I trusted Christ as my Savior, crucified in weakness, you say, holes in his hands, I fell in his love. That's all I fell into. Dear friend, tonight in the meeting, that's all is awaiting you. You shall not fall to the ground. He promised life eternal to whosoever will come to him. He's mighty, he's strong, and he's waiting for you to come. I will finish my little message with this now. We read one last verse. Dear friend, tonight, I wish I would not have to read that verse, but I must be faithful to you 
and to my Savior. Those lovely hands, pierced hands, are waiting for you to save you. Come tonight. Receive forgiveness of your sins. Through him and him alone that died on the cross to save you. And if you fail to do so, friend, we read together, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God in that coming day when you will have to be judged for those sins that could have been forgiven by the one that had his hands and feet pierced at the cross for your sins. May God bless his word.